Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Now, before we quickly begin, I want to pog something very, very quickly because it is only two more days until the Scottish YouTubers charity match where we take on Falkirk Foundation for a Sam H Mental Health Charity. If you want to buy tickets and come along to our event, the ticket link will be in the description below. £10 per ticket. And um, also, you don't need to buy them online if you don't want to. You can turn up to the gates on Saturday and buy them there at Falkirk Stadium. Two o'clock kickoff. Make sure you're there the likes of me... CJ Novo 992, uh, Marley 13, Marley's brother Mark, Batchy, you know, Sharp Dev, a bunch of other YouTubers that are going to be there uh, playing for a very good cause and we're hoping to break the, the tally that we broke last year, uh, that we done last year for Sam H, uh, which was I think £3,000, so we're hoping to break that this year and hopefully we can, it's a bigger venue um, and it, a lot more preparations went out of this one, we've been trying our best to make it as, an, as good an event as possible. So, please, make sure you can try and get yourself along there on Saturday and support Mission, um, who will be putting in quite the shift, I imagine. Uh, but, aye, today I promised that we would do this, well, I asked if we should do this in the video that i done on Tuesday. Uh, and that was a season review for the 2018-19 season for Celtic, kind of go through month by month and such. Now, a couple of years ago, I proper put effort into something like this. And I don't know if you've you seen it, but it was the Invincible season and i done, like, a, a proper, fully edited... 15 20 minute video going through month by month each result and blah 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 and it was it was very nicely edited and such and, and I, don't, I just don't have the time for that anymore it's, it's, it's gone that time is gone uh, well I, I put a lot of forward plan into that now. I've not put a lot of forward plan into this one so this one's going to be kind of more just a general opinion kind of like what I've done last season as well a general overview of the season and what I thought of Celtic throughout the 18-19 season and what we uh, have to look forward to going into next season now this was a season of, of many Many different emotions, um, ups and downs. It was a roller coaster. It was an unexpected season, to say the least. Um, and it just, you know, a lot of things that could have went wrong went wrong for Celtic this year. But at the end of the day, we still managed to go ahead and have a historic season, uh, break more records, and bring home a treble, treble. Uh, unbelievable. We'll get to the, the kind of overview uh, of the treble, treble and stuff at the end. But we're going to start from the start. I talk about the season all the way through, the disappointments, the highs, the lows, everything. We're going to try and cover in the space of about 10 minutes, so everyone will be kind of rushed. Um, but I we may as well start from way back at the start, and that was the Champions League qualifiers. Now, the Champions League, we got knocked out earlier than we would have liked to this year. Um, we managed to get through the first couple of rounds, and obviously Celtic were asked to play another round um, at the start of this season, uh, on top of what they previously played in seasons before, which was, yes, annoying. Yes, it's a kind of spit in the face from UEFA to the clubs who deserve to be in European competition like ourselves. But we, we had to face off and we had to do it. Uh, we got through the first couple of rounds and then we faced Athens where the the performances were dreadful. And we deserved to go out the Champions League in the, was it the third round qualifiers. We drew it home, we lost away. Uh, we weren't good enough at the end of the day. There were so many silly mistakes though that, you know, could have prevented us from going out so early, especially in that home leg against Athens. Athens obviously took the lead at Celtic Park through an error through Mikael Lustig and just that kind of schoolboy error that he used to have been committing to his man or whatever cost us a goal and we went down right in the stroke of half time and if we didn't concede that goal, how different things could have been? Maybe we would have been in the Champions League this season but we went out early, then we had to go and face Sadura to get into the Europa League and we got in, we got into the Europa League I suppose at the end of the day we got into European football and, and that's what matters if we get to European football it's at least a, a sigh of relief rather than no European football, it could be worse but we went alone, obviously Rangers joined us this year um, but we got to the, the group stages where we were drawn Leipzig, Salzburg and Rosenborg not an easy group to say the least but we'll come on to the outcome of that group when we get down to that part of the video we started the league season I think you know, a lot of obviously high expectations from Celtic fans. We went into the season off the back of a double treble, off the back of, yet again, dominating Scottish football. And we went into the season with fresh challenges in front of us. It was a different looking league, um, you could say, in, in, as in different aspects. Obviously, a lot had changed in the main opposition. Rangers, they'd once again switched manager. Um you look at the signings that were made around the league, I think, at the start of the season, and it was the same at the start of the 17-18 season, that I think a lot of the teams around us improved, and we didn't. Because at the start of the season, we lost key players. We we, we lost big names, mainly the one that I'm looking at the shirt on the wall right now, Moussa Dembele. We sold him for £20 million. Pounds. Yes, we managed to secure Edouard on a full-time deal, a £9 million pound deal, but we never really used the Dembele money. 
we never really improved our squad as properly as we should have. We brought in a couple of players on loan, obviously, a Benkovic and Arzani coming in. And then we brought in Edward. But it was a disappointing transfer window. And once again, the teams around us did improve. They brought in players we missed out. And a big chance to sign John McGinn, one I'm still sour about. And I think if that transfer window last season showed us anything, and showed Peter Law and the board anything, the disappointment amongst Celtic fans, then it should be a tip for this transfer window, which is likely to be disappointing as well with these leaked rumours and such. Take the tips from last year. Look at the points where we struggled last year and because of the failure in that transfer window, it did cause problems. And maybe it was the reason it caused Brendan Rodgers to walk as well. Think of those and take tips for this transfer window. But we lost him barely. We went into a season without him. He obviously was there for the qualifiers and was gone um, away to Leon, And we're still yet to reinvest the money. But uh, the teams around us improved and we went out of the season. A poor start, you could say. Arguably, a lot of people might try and say, oh, it wasn't too bad. But from our opening six games, we only won three. Which... You know, it doesn't sound horrible, but you look at the points we did drop around those games. We dropped points to to, um, to St Mirren, away from home, in their first game with a new manager, where they were bottom of the table and really, really struggling. We should have put that to bed. We lost to Hearts away from home. Not an easy place to go, of course, Tyne Castle, but if you remember the performance, it was piss poor. And then one game I was there as well, we lost to Kilmarnock at Rugby Park 2-1. And once again, a performance that lacked so much... Um, it was just a lot, a lot of problems on the park. And, and at the start of the season, if you remember, a lot of people were getting really concerned and thinking we were going to throw away the title. Myself, I remember making a video and saying, right, everybody calm down. It's only the start of the season. And we did pull it together, of course. I was right in saying calm down. But the start of the season was very poor. And maybe that was off the lack of morale, the lack of motivation that was boosted from the transfer window. Because one thing you've got to take in mind from the transfer window is you need to bring in players. You need to give players in the squad competition. This is a team that's got very cosy with their positions. Because over the last three years, we've saw so much success with this same lineup, with this same tactic, with this same uh, organisation. You know, we've, we've, we've saw so much success that we've not made that many changes and players have just kind of got a wee bit lazy and people have got too comfortable and sometimes you just need to bring in players to give these ones who are getting too comfortable a bit up the arse and a little bit of competition for places and we didn't do that and maybe that start to the season showed that we did need a little bit more a little bit more motivation we cracked on with the season um, I think the form did definitely pick up towards Christmas time. We got a, a good few wins racked up. I think we only lost two games in the space of that Colmarmot loss and the end of the season, but the end at the end of the, the, the year, sorry, but the end of the year was one of the major talking points. Um, Rangers managed to beat us for the first time in three years, uh, just about, and that was a shock to the system for a lot of people. And I think it was definitely an overreaction in the whole term of Scottish football. You know, after that loss, Rangers went to the top of the table uh, by what was that a point or something? And that was when, you know, you got all the cries of, we're going to win the league, we're going to win the league. Ryan Jacks won us the league, blah, blah, blah. It was only December 29th, but it was definitely a wake-up call. And it was a show that we have, we did deplete from the past two seasons beforehand. We didn't improve. We were looking weak. That performance that day, one player turned up. It was Cal McGregor and he was playing at left-back. And from that performance, it showed that the January window was going to have to be important, which Brendan Rodgers did make important. But... It was also, I think, a sign to show that going forward, 9 and 10 in a row won't be easy. And we saw that again when we got down to May. But I think it was a, de a general overreaction from everyone in the city, probably not city, from, from both sides. From both sides, because one side you get Rangers fans who were sitting chanting and crying about winning the league. That was it, it was over. Rangers are going to win the league. And then on one side of the city, the other side, sorry, you got um, a big group of Celtic fans you know, calling for the heads of many players and saying we're fucked and blah, 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 and, and this, that, and next thing. There was an overreaction to both sides, but we managed to pull it together once we got back from the January window. But and within that same space of the season, the Europa League, we managed somehow to make it to the last 32 of the Europa League. A very um, good achievement. Look, at the end of the day, if you get into the Champions League, the aim is to be in European football after Christmas. Um, and yes, I do miss the Champions League theme playing at Celtic Park. And yes, I do miss the Champions League nights. They are better. They are more important. There's more money in it as well. And that's one of the main things that Celtic lack. Uh, uh, it was when we missed out the Champions League, that's the funding. But we got to the last 32 through a miracle on the last day. I mean, I still remember sitting there in Celtic Park watching us 
losing to, to Salzburg horribly. One of the better teams I've ever seen play Celtic in European football. I remember sitting there though, watching the game, thinking to myself, how bad can we get? How truly bad? And, and thinking to myself, we fucked it. We had it in our hands. We had a home game. All we needed was a fucking point to get through to the Europa League last 32 and we fucked it. Because at the time, Leipzig were beating Rosenberg. And then... It was like a fucking game from the, the, the 90s or the 80s or something and people are all fucking they'll check their phones and listen to the radio and then you, you go, you hear the news, Rosenborg had scored uh, and knocked out Leipzig for us. And we got through to the last 32 where we'd take on Valencia, which we'll get on to. We returned though from the, the winter break, obviously now installed again in Scottish football. We returned from the, the winter break to a very good run of form and a few new faces. I've, you know, obviously the loan system was utilised heavily uh, for Brendan Rodgers here. Uh, we, we've seen the likes of Ollie Buck come in, we've seen Jerry Tolian come in, um, we've seen, who was the one, T Timo Weah come in. All three players looking great on paper to sign, and I was very happy with the signings at the time. Obviously, their, their Celtic careers might have not went the way that we wanted them to go, and maybe they all did lack what we wanted to see. But at the end of the day, on paper, the intention was there, and, and, and when they first came in, they all looked like very bright signings. To me, Oliver Buck was scoring, uh, Tim Aware was coming off the bench and scoring, he was also looking tricky, he was looking fresh, he was looking something just new, bringing that flair to the game. And Tol Jan was looking solid for me. So we came back from the January window and the form was superb, you know, we, we, fantastic, right up until we lost to Rangers um, at Ibrox. Never lost a game. So uh, there was not many complaints. Europa League, last 32, what a trip I had, got a week away to Benidorm, fantastic, can't complain. Uh, thank you Celtic for supplying me the reason that I have now dropped out of university uh, that week alone, just that week, that's it, aye, that, that, yes, in case you didn't know, I dropped out of university, but um, aye, that week caused it, and I wouldn't take it back in a heartbeat, despite going out of the Europa League, a fantastic experience, my first European away trip experience, which was absolutely marvellous, um, and I'll, I'll kill to do that again, hopefully they get Valencia again so I can get a week to Benidorm, because um, <clears throat> I was, it was cracking, met some good people over there as well, generally just a fantastic trip away, and we should be proud of our performance over in Valencia. If we didn't go down to 10 men, who knows? Maybe we had a fighting chance. But we went out. But it was right after that, the talking point of the season, right after we were knocked out of the Europa League. What happens? Ratars leaves us. Brendan Rodgers has left Celtic Football Club. And the news that I never in a million years would have expected to see. He went to Leicester. It was meltdown. It was meltdown in East End of Glasgow. It was fucking chaos. What's happening? All in the space of a day, things had changed. Everything was done in the space of a day. It was crazy. I mean, here was me chanting every week, Brendan Rodgers here for 10 in a row, and he was off. He was gone. Not much else we could have done about it, but in the space of a day, we had everything changed. Neil Lennon was in many, many people having the doubts, and the, the, the discontent was creeping in a little bit. Um, but Neil Lennon came in, and to be fair to him, despite poor performances, despite last-minute winners, he carried on the good form. Yes, we dropped a couple of points here and there. But, I mean, d after that chaos and that catastrophe that was that week in February, there wasn't an awful lot Neil Lennon could do. It, was, it wasn't his team. He had to come into what was the most successful Celtic side since the Martin O'Neill era and carry that on. And it's not an easy job. So, hats off to Neil Lennon for doing that. And, uh, aye, he carried us right through to the split. Uh, we in the split, we only lost to Rangers. We beat Rangers at Celtic Park again as well. Forgot to throw that in there. Uh, generally, league form was, was decent. Apart from losing to Rangers at Ibrox again. It was decent. It was good. We won the league. We got. I, forgot, I didn't even mention the League Cup. Forgot about the League Cup. We won that as well. And we won the Scottish Cup. We won the fucking treble treble. And that brings me to the general end of this video. We won the treble treble 2018-19 despite the downs. Despite the chaos. Despite everything that could have went wrong. We're still a roaring success. And Celtic are still the best team in Scotland. We still own this fucking country. Pardon my French. I know a lot of people don't like it when I swear. But we own this country. It's ours. And until someone can barge... Us out the way, whether it be Aberdeen, Rangers, Hibs, Hearts, whoever. We are the ones on top. And let's savour these moments. Let's drink them in while we can. How many times will we be able to see a treble treble in our lifetimes? Not very many. But like, probably never again. So let's enjoy it, because I certainly did. And uh, yes, next season there may be doubts, there may be a bit of unhappiness that Lennon was given the job and a little bit of that lack of ambition being thrown about but all we can do now is get behind them and hope things go well and hope our recruitment's better than what it was last summer because despite it being last bad last summer we still went and done it all and hopefully that's the case for the next two years because the recruitment probably will be bad and we've got to deal with that
But aye, if you've enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed this season review, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Make sure to get tickets for the charity match as well if you can. Let me know your season review as well as concisely as possible in the comments. And aye, I'll see you all next time.